I'm absolutely thrilled to introduce you to one of Australia's most talented hairstylists, Anthony Nader. Welcome to Ageless by Rescue. Thank you very, very much. It's an honor to be here. You very know what? You know what's interesting is for me, hair was the ultimate cornerstone of transformation. It really was the one thing that when I was younger, I didn't understand my hair and it's actually been the older that I get the more that I've understood the power of good hair the power mm -hmm. the transformative power of hair and mm -hmm. that it's actually never too late to have the best haircut or hair color or hairstyle of your life and so it makes it a really amazing ageless conversation to have because mm -hmm. it's one of those things I believe that can give you such a quick payoff for transformation it has a yeah. hugely rejuvenating um, effect and yeah. it's relatively inexpensive and certainly painless. So it's yeah. a perfect topic to deep dive into on ageless. Well, 100%. And, you know, I'm biased, but of course I think hair is, is the total being of, of anyone, really. Um, I mean, I've been doing this now for 30 years and, and I'm all about, you know, I think, we, you know, we are just talking before about it really is a journey about working out your hair. And, you know, when you're young, you don't appreciate, you know, what texture you've got or how you can deal with the texture, how you can tame the texture. And, you know, when you and I grew up, um, you know, all those years ago, we, you know, back then it was all about, you know, that Japanese hair straightening, which just tortured the life out of, oh, I you know, but we all had it, didn't we? And we all practiced it, but that's what we did. And so, you know, and I've had the salon now for, well, next year, it'll be 25 years. So I've seen the whole phase of, you know, getting that Japanese straightening because everyone want, wanted poker straight hair. And, you know, I would get all these ethnic girls that came from the suburbs that wanted that poker straight Asian hair. And that's what we did, right? Yeah. And, you know, and then you cut fast forward to today and then you've got, you know, it's all about embracing and health and well-being and, you know, feeding your hair nutrients and just letting, you know, having a good haircut, you know, which is what I love to do is cutting. I don't colour. You wouldn't want me to colour your hair, but I can give you a great haircut that you can you can wash and wear or you can blow it out once a week and it's going to work for you. Let's so, talk yeah. about cut because I think this is a really wonderful area to start. Um, yeah. One of the, the first things that happens to a celebrity when, you know, the stylist and the glam squad get hold of, you know, I always like to reference Charlize Theron from a farm in yeah. South Africa yeah. to Charlize Theron. Yes. Who, you know, a golden statue of beauty. Yeah. One of yeah. the first things that they do is transform the celebrity's mm -hmm. hair and mm. cut is the biggest signal that yeah. something has Things, changed. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I would love for you to talk about what are some of the things that you see, you know, when you're uh, doing hair for runway, for shoots with celebrities, what are some of the things that we can do with cut that are instantly transformative, instantly revitalizing? And then I'll get you to kind of reference some um, celebrities with different haircuts and textures. Yeah, because we all love celebrities. I mean, I think, you know, first and foremost, what I've, what I've experienced is the hairdresser needs to carry a confidence when they talk with their client, especially if it's a first time client. I get a lot of first time clients that will come here because of whatever reason. And they come because um, I think because I'm older, therefore I've got the experience. So there are a few things that work in my favor being a 50 year old that I have experienced under my belt, so to speak. So when I 
when I've got a client in the chair that wants to change, I am 100% ready for it, but only if it suits them. Right. So what I normally say is, by all means, all my receptionists will say, you know, bring in a few references. You know, it can be celebrities, you know, the Met Gala that was just on this week, whatever. And let's talk about, you know, fashion is really great, but let's talk about what your lifestyle is. You know, the other day I just did a, a, a hair story on curtain bangs, you know, and that's all well and fine. But do you understand when you have curtain bangs, you know, do you understand the growth patterns that you may have in the front? Do you understand the hair texture you have? What, what um, some celebrity may have, you know, could be Sienna Miller or, Bella Hadid or whoever have a great curtain fringe may not work on you because of your face shape. So that I think that comes down to all that comes down to is the hairstylist's confidence with how they can guide the client to having the best haircut they can have that fits with their hair texture. So you you yeah. start your starting texture as the most important yeah. determinant of the most suitable cut. So I'm going to yeah. jump in here. Texture is one of the things that really changes as we age. You yeah. know, we get hair thinning, uh, yeah. not just in the amount of hair that we have, but possibly in the yeah. texture of the hair. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. maybe the look that worked for you in your 20s, and maybe you yeah. could pull off curtain bangs in your 20s, yeah. maybe in your 40s and your 50s and your yeah. 60s, you need to yeah. have a look, a relook with a great hairdresser yeah. as to what your texture and your lifestyle yeah. is. Oh, 100%. And I think, you know, how I normally describe it is think of a leaf in, in the autumn, right? So it's, it's all the nutrients have been sucked out of that leaf, right? But when it comes to spring, summer, it's full of the nutrients and it's supple and, you know, it's got resilience and it's got elasticity to it. So what I mean, I you're think talking about, in the exact same way as we talk about skincare. Well, well yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's how, I mean, I love beauty, whether it's hair or face, whatever. So, and I mean, I've, Trust me, I have done a million beauty editors, you know, and I still do a million beauty editors to this day. So I, I, I guess you could say I know that, that, that language, I guess you could say. Um, but so, I think it's really interesting that you're, so for me, uh, I'm thinking yes. I need to start thinking about hair in the same way yeah. as I think about skincare Skin. because yes. I need to think yeah. about the nutrients. I need to think about yeah. elasticity. I need to think yeah. about growth. So it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I think also it's that thing of I've been around the block. So I know, I know, and it's a good thing. I'm very comfortable with where I am at my age. So I think the reason why I, I have a lot of clients in my chair is because I can I, I can I can feel them out, so to speak, you know. So whether you're a 20 year old model sitting in my, in my chair or a 60 year old woman, it's a, it's a different consultation, but with the same mindset of, well, if your hair is highly bleached and you're showing me a picture of, I don't know, Gigi Hadid, you know, it's, 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 a different, it's a different texture. And I keep talking about texture because anyone that knows me well, I'm all about texture. That's why the salon is called Raw, because it's, I'm all about, I'm all about texture. So talking so, about texture in the same kind of vein as skin. So going yeah. back to what are the biological changes in hair, um, yeah. you know, a, as we get older that affect yeah. texture? Could you share with us the science yeah. behind hair? I mean, the thing that you've got to understand is if you're, if you're once again, if I had a client in my chair and she was, you know, 70 year old and she, she, wants bleached hair 
And she said, you know, back in the day when I was like 30, you know, I had bleached hair and it worked wonders on me. Um, but, you know, how many kids did she have in that time? Mm -hmm. um, has she gone through menopause? I'm sure she has at that age. And does and menopause the, affect the skin, uh, the hair health oh, and texture? Oh, 100%. You know, and that's where hair supplements come into it. You know, and I'm, I'm pretty lucky that, that you, you, well, not lucky that, that, I mean, every woman that sits in my chair knows her body quite well. And she knows what she needs to do. And, you know, I don't think there's one woman that, that really doesn't sit in my chair that is not taking some form of, you know, whether it's a hair supplement. And what's, that, what's a hair supplement that you think actually is legit and works? Um, well, without naming brands, I mean, just look for, just look for ingredients that have collagen, um, 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 Silica, I've heard, is amazing. Silica is wonderful. You know, there's an argument with silica that, you know, don't use too much silica because it can coat the hair and it can suffocate, you know, the cuticle and everything. You know, I'm all about silica in little doses, you know, because it and adds I, I, In terms of well. ingestibles, what are some of the supplements that you, you think that you were talking about ingredients that you think are worthwhile taking as ingestibles? As in, as in ingredients? Yeah. Or, or brands. Ingredients, yeah. Um, well, Amiga is is exactly what, you know, fish oil is is exactly what I talk about all the time. Amiga is is kind of like the the holy grail, if you will, for keeping the hair plumped up. Because you know, when you get older, you need to keep each hair, each hair strand needs to be plump. That's the goal. So whatever you can fill the cuticles up, and you and I know what cuticles look like. So think of, you know, um, scales of a fish. So when you're giving yourself, whether it's a supplement, I mean, a supplement is all about, and I'm all about it, it's, it's all about well-being and treating your body so beautifully and, and getting the maximum out of what you can get, you know. And then on top of that, then you've got, you know, your hair treatments? Do you opt for an oil treatment for shine? Do you opt for a protein treatment for strength? Do you opt for a hydrating treatment for moisture? And, you know, and which it, one should you opt for? Like, do you have the, when you have your clients, do you put them on a rotation where, you know, they would yeah, have, definitely. yeah. Yeah. I mean, what I, what I've always said is have two different bottles of shampoo and two different bottles of conditioner in your shower. So, so for that? example, so what if you've got, for example, grey coarse hair, Yeah. okay? So you've got grey coarse hair, I would recommend that you use, shampoo your hair twice a week. I'm not into over shampooing the hair at all. And I think Australians at large shampoo their hair way too much. And I think yeah, that- Yeah, I don't shampoo always, my hair. Like, like never more than twice a week ever. Yeah, yeah. I think, and I don't I think have oily hair. My scalp has adjusted. I'm trying to train yeah. my 11 year old daughter to get off this cycle of washing her hair every day. Um, yeah. It really transforms the health of your hair when you stop over washing it. Yes, and the scalp. You know, the scalp is where it all comes from. So you know, it's that it's that scalp surface that is like the God, if you will, that you've got to, you've got to be good to it. And you've got to, you know, and that's where oil treatments, for example, oil treatments are brilliant for lubricating the scalp. So whether, whether you've had, you know, a scalp bleach, so your, your scalp is, is flaky and dry, or um, whether, you know, it's winter and your scalp is dry and your hair, but you want to lubricate it and you want to, you know, it's like the cogs on a wheel, you know, you've got to keep it all, all going. Otherwise you're going to collapse. So with so, and you oil treatment, sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm interrupting. No, no, no. I want to go back first to, you were saying the yeah. two shampoos and the two conditioners. Yeah. yeah what are the yeah. two types of shampoos? Okay. And what are the two types of conditioners? Okay. So here's, look, here's what I do. I, I use a silver shampoo and conditioner, which is, and it is silver. It's not even violet or purple. It's actually silver. 
-hmm. So I shampoo my hair um, with, with that product on Wednesday. And then Sunday is my hair ritual Sunday and face ritual. Don't look at my face. But um, Sunday, I use a hydrating moisture shampoo, conditioner and mask. I mask every Sunday. So through the week, I'm doing a cosmetic shampoo and conditioner to counteract any brassiness. So my silver hair will stay nice and cool. Mm-hmm. And then on Sunday, it's my, it's my pampering nutritious treatment so you know we have a lot of clients that that are blonde like you right so i'd say once a week shampoo it with you know a violet purple shampoo so that's going to counteract your brassiness and it's going to it's, it's going to cool it down and then on the weekend use a nice hydrating treatment or a protein treatment and so you've so- got two different you've got two different causes so one is cosmetic and one is 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 um is is um think of it like a doctor you you know it's more about nutritious in a way yes so that's why it's always good to have two on the go in the shower going back to the scalp i think this is a really interesting area you know it it is the garden where the hair grows from it's the only place where the hair is alive because once it grows it's dead so what are some of the scalp um health uh friendly treatments or techniques that you suggest whether it be brushing whether it be exfoliating whether it be massaging or as you said oils what are some of the things that we can do to really boost scalp health. Yeah. Look, I know, I know it's old fashioned, but you just getting a Mason Pearson brush or or just a hundred percent ball bristle brush and a cushion brush and just brushing your hair is that it's not rocket science. It's not going to cost a lot of money. Anything that you can do to stimulate your scalp and underneath the surface of the scalp, that's like the alarm clock. So think of that as the alarm clock. If you don't, or or if you don't want to brush it, when you're shampooing your hair, when the conditioner is on, think of that time as a massaging. So you're massaging your scalp, you're moving your scalp. So when you shampoo your hair, you're removing the dirt. So it's vigorous movements and you want to get rid of that dirt. So you, it's kind of like your scalp is waking up and it's like, whoo, there's something going on here, you know. Yeah, yeah. Then you put the conditioner on and then you want to, if, you can, if you've got a couple of minutes in the shower just to do a deep massage, that's, that's the alarm bells right there that's going to, you know, it's, it's the alarm that's going to wake up your, everything in your scalp the blood is going to start to go again and it's like hair growth. It's like, whoa, this is incredible. That's what I was going to say because what you're talking about is stimulating blood flow, which gets yeah. collagen and nutrients to the yeah. scalp, which is yeah. where the growth and the hair health yeah. happens. Yeah. It, and, you know, kids today, I don't I don't feel like kids know to, well, it, I mean, it's, it's all aspects, but it's that good old thing of, you, you know, you can take hair supplements to the cows come home. But just brush your hair once a day, twice a day if you want, for a couple of minutes. And I'm telling you, I mean, you you must know yourself. There's nothing better than brushing your hair. And You're you going to die when I tell you this. I don't brush what? my hair at all. Are you serious? I never really? brush my hair. It is like a... Because it goes big? Because it goes big, because it it loses its shape. And I've actually, my hair is so thick, it never gets oily. And it grows like wildfire touch wood. Even when I was pregnant and after pregnancy, when all the hair falls out, I still had more hair than, you know, seven people. But I never brush my hair. And I am now motivated to brush my hair purely for the scalp health, because it seems like a really great anti-aging thing to do. It is, it is. I'm telling you, the scalp is, it's the gem. It's its the epicenter. But because That's I go to the hairdresser from. when I'm not in lockdown, I go to the hairdresser twice a week. Yeah. I do get yeah. that really vigorous yeah. scrubbing and yeah. massaging at the basin. And I found yeah. it really hard in lockdown. You're going to laugh. Yeah. I, 
I find it really laborious to wash my hair. It's hard. Yeah. But your hair, like I, I know your hair and it is hard for you to do naturally. It is. 100%. It yeah. really is. Take yourself off to your hairdresser and just <laughs> that's the best thing that I'm you can ethnic. do. I'm ethnic. I'm Iranian. We, you know, we are blessed <laughs> and cursed. Yeah. With a lot you of are. Hair. You are so blessed. And I know, I know women like you that have had kids and it's like they've got seven times the amount of hair. Yeah. And like. Like, it's rare. It's rare, but, you know, so blessed. You'll have hair until you're, you know, 100. I hope so. I hope so. Mm. I want to go back to something we were talking about off camera before we started recording. I'll, I'll share my yeah. story of hair with you. I had the worst hair of anyone that I've known or ever <laughs> met. I find um, that hard to believe. I know. I'm going have to you got a picture photo. Yeah, I'll, I'll find photos, but I had short hair, I had yeah. coarse hair, I had yeah. wiry hair, and I yeah. had so much hair. Yeah. And so yeah. growing up in the 80s, my mom yeah. cut my hair boy short. I, I had yeah. boy short hair. Yeah. And then it wasn't until I went away to university, I was 18, and I was in Queensland, and I went to a Lebanese hairdresser like really just living on the Gold Coast, my hair was yeah. now poofy on top of yeah. being yeah. coarse and yeah. unmanageable. And it was really yeah. the worst hair ever. And he said to me, I'm going to straighten your hair. And I'm going to mention that he used a product called, you're going to die, GLAT. Do you remember GLAT? Hello, <laughs> we used to use that. GLAT. So, we used to, yeah. 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 So well, basically this is pure acid. It's what you yeah. would use to yeah. you know, straighten yeah. African-American. Anyway. Yeah, it so, business. So he put clap through my hair and yeah. you know, I had a bob. And for the first time <laughs> in my life, I had smooth hair. For the yeah. first time it's in good. my life, I didn't mm. have like a, a puffball on top of my head. Yeah. And yeah. And then a few years later, I went to my hairdresser in Sydney, Joe Bailey, who I love. Yeah. And he looked yeah, at me he's... and said, Listen, you need to grow your hair. You look like a pumpkin. Yeah, isn't and that said, wonderful? Someone like you needs to use the natural weight of your hair to work yeah. with it. And I promise you, you'll stop having to put straighteners in. So I followed that. Yeah. And then as I got older, so I did the reverse. Most people cut their hair as they got older. I'm 47 and I've got, you know, the longest hair that I've ever had. It's, it's pretty damn so beautiful. Awful. It's really but, beautiful. So my journey was kind of reverse. I had the worst hair yeah. of my life growing up. I wasn't a pretty teen with beautiful, long flowing yeah. hair. I had to learn from my hairdressers how to cut it, how to style it, how to yeah. care for it how to brush it, wash it, all of that. Yeah. But a lot of people, most people, have a different experience altogether. They've had mm. beautiful, gorgeous hair younger, and now they're struggling with what exactly to do with it as they're getting older. So yeah. given that, you know, cut and hair health are your specialty, yeah. do you have some advice around the right cut for different types of hair? So Let's talk mm. about like if you have thick, um, you know, ethnic, wiry okay. hair, yeah. what would be right. a good cut? What would be some things to ask your sure. hairdresser for? Sure. Well, first and foremost, if you've got that hair type, you want to make sure that there's length in it. Because the show, and you know this, the shorter you go, the more it's going to, the shorter you go, you're going to end up with width. So yeah, you'll end up with the pumpkin mushroom. that Joe Bailey spoke of. He said exactly. <laughs> so you've got to you've got to have weight in it to to keep the control in there. Now, at the same time, you've got to have a few long layers in there. Don't keep it one length because that's how it's going to look like this triangle. So what I normally do with um, this hair type <clears throat> is you've got to add a few long layers through the interior. The other thing that I would do is add some softness around the face. Now, when I say softness, I never say, I never say layers as such. I always say softness because that is, it's just, a, it's just 
well, it's just softer. And I think as soon as you say layers around the face, I think women get a little scared. Yeah, you do. You so feel like someone's going to hack you into your hair. You do. You do. So it's also a, a word to- terminology thing for me too. But, you know, I would, you know, you'd start the layers way below, <clears throat> way below your jawline getting uh, longer so you'd open up through here because if you keep it all in one length in the front it's going to close in your face Mm -hmm. so my aim for every woman that sits in my chair is to have a hairstyle that that looks soft Mm. and it's got a beautiful texture to it and And more importantly it moves yeah it's yeah it's youthful. And, it, you know, women want air on the roots and they want to see a little movement flicking everywhere. So for me, it's very rare that I'll keep, I'll keep hair solid unless they've got finer hair, but we can talk about that later. But the hair type that, that, that we're talking about, it needs to be loosened up and it needs to shake. And what about Does curly that- hair? Naturally. Yeah. And I'll get you to talk about two types of curly hair. One would be more naturally ringletty, curly, curly hair. And the other yeah. one I'll get you to touch on is, you know, um, kinks and curls. Yeah. But what what would right. you recommend well, with curly hair? Well, first and foremost, I always cut any kind of curly hair, wavy hair, dry. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So we asked the client to um, come in clean hair. I can look at it and I can see how it looks naturally. Because if they wear it also in those ringlets, for example, let's talk ringlets. If they wear it in ringlets, that's how, that's how they're going to wear it. They're not going to blow it out or anything like that because it's too hard for them. So then I never keep it one length and I'll always go, I'll, I'll start around the perimeter of the, of the hairline and I'll gauge how it's moving and see how it's sitting. And I take pieces out all different times. So I don't just, and the other thing is, I never cut a straight line in this hair texture either. Because when you cut a straight line in this texture, it will it'll bounce up for a start and it'll bounce up to look solid. So this hair type, I always point cut into it. So it sits really soft. I never use thinning scissors. I, I, just, I just don't use thinning scissors at all. Um, I tend to do everything with scissors. So when you cut, especially that hair type with scissors, you'll still get texture, but where a lot of hairdressers I find, I find not go wrong, but when a client says, I've got thick hair and I need it thinned out, A lot of hairdressers will go straight to the thinning scissors or they'll go to a razor. Yes, that's true. So then then in my mind, because I'm really technical as well as visual, when when you cut with thinning scissors, and I know that you can visualise this, your cuticle is going to be really, really frizzy. I never let them touch. No no one has thinned my hair out since I was a kid and those were my (laughs) hurry. So that's why, that's why I, I, if, if a hairdresser ever came to you with thinning scissors, I would jump out of that chair straight away. So what you want, you want clean texture. So you still want that softness. So it's all in the way that you cut the ends. So I like the ends to still look like ends and they still look clean. So my ends, when I do this hair type, it doesn't look um, jagged or wispy or fried. That's, that's really a key because women with this hair type, with ringlets especially, you've got to see how it sits naturally. Because, and then I shampoo the hair off. Well, not me, but I have someone that will shampoo the hair. So then we can see how it sits. So, yeah, you normally find people with, with curly hair, coily hair. That's how they wear it. So you want to cut it how it sits naturally. And what about with frizzy, kinky hair? What, what, are, what are some, you know, um, great techniques to ask your hairdresser for in terms of yeah. wearing it well? 
Well, I mean, for me, it's 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 definitely in the cut with that hair type. You know, once again, it's not about over texturizing it or razoring it. It's about creating still a soft edge. But I think it's more home care. It's more about because frizzy hair is all about that the hair strand has has the life sucked out of it. So it's got no elasticity. It's got no moisture in it. So you need to replace and put moisture in there, not protein. You've got to use moisture because moisture is what's going to control the frizz. So it's going to keep it more compact so it won't go wide. And it's, you know, it, it, you'll have control. So you can still have layers um, if you wish with this hair type. It's just a matter, and you'll probably find that women that have this hair type want their hair blow dried because they want their hair controlled. Mm. So it's about creating a hair shape that is easy to blow out and it's not going to sit like a pyramid at the end of the day. Now, we, we yeah. were talking about thin hair, which is often, you know, uh, a function of age, hormones, yeah. Um, yeah. over-processing as well can result yeah. in thin and not just a vol a amount of hair, but even the type yeah. of hair. What are some good yeah. cuts to kind of give you a rejuvenated yeah. look for yeah. that kind of hair? Look, what I suggest is definitely keeping the baseline more solid. So, for example, if you've got a bob, right? So if you've got a bob below your shoulder, I would aim to go higher. What you need to think of is the longer it gets, the more drag you'll get, and therefore it's going gonna, it's gonna to hug all over your face. So you want to give the haircut some energy. So the higher you take the length, the more energy you're going to get to the haircut. It'll have more, more freedom. It'll have more bounce to it. The other thing that I would do is not keep the hair one length. By that, I'm not saying cut short layers in there, but you've got to add some softness through the interior so the hair moves still. Because if you keep it one length, it's just going to look like you're being caught out in the rain and it's just stuck to the head and it's just solid. Yeah. So I go through I go through the interior and I pick pieces out and I just kind of slice them out. Um, it's a very visual thing for me when I tackle the interior, so to speak. And around the front, like I, I, I love nothing more than if you've got finer hair that I do some, it can be an overgrown curtain fringe or it need, you need softness around the, around the um, hairline. Um, so you need something that, that you can push aside. Um, you need pieces that veil over the face a little bit. So it adds a bit of character, but it's also got it's also got that energy once again that the hair is moving and it's not just stuck to the head. Because what's going to happen also, when you've got your hair one length, nine times out of ten, you're either going to tuck it tight behind your ear, which doesn't do anything anyway, defeats the purpose, or you're just going to tie it in a top knot. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, and the other thing when you've got fine hair and the older you get, you want to just be careful with using too much bleach because that just, you know, it just expands the hair cuticle and therefore the hair cuticle just blows right out. So no amount of Olaplex or K18 is going to help, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a Band-Aid, you know, solution. So if you're at that age bracket where, you know, your hair is feeling a little more frail with, you, you, you know, the older that you get, I would suggest not using so much bleach if you're having highlights and just opt for high lift tints. Yeah. And maybe the odd, odd bleach um, weave, you know, is happening in there. But don't do like a full head of foils with bleach because you're just asking for trouble. Your hair's going to look like cotton wool. And what about Asian hair, which is often very fine in its strand, but, yeah. but quite thick in its amount of hair in the head of yeah. hair? What are some great yeah. cuts to the I, revitalizing, rejuvenating, youthful? Yeah. I mean, 
Can I tell you, I love cutting Asian hair and I have a big Asian clientele of women. And the mission for Asian hair is they want volume, but they also want movement. Right. Movement is a very, very big thing with Asian hair because it's always cut so solid that it just looks like a helmet. So any hairdresser that, that you know, encounters cutting Asian hair, the goal is, the end result, is to get movement in there so it doesn't sit solid. So I would tackle Asian hair very differently. Um, obviously, I, I like a clean baseline. So always take the length nice and blunt, but go through the interior and, you know, add softness where it needs softening. I wouldn't cut the top layers too short because otherwise it's going to look a bit 80s, a bit also a bit punkish. But you want to maintain that you've got a nice solid baseline and you've got softness through the interior. And that's what's going to give Asian hair that softness because people with Asian hair want, they want the hair to move. You're they right. Don't you don't want, want to look it. like a cartoon character with, as you said, you know, just a, a helmet yeah. of glossy or yeah. you know, very straight hair. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely it's right. like a Lego man, you know. It's yeah, you want Lego the movement. Solid. Yeah, you want the movement. And, you know, the other thing with, with Asian hair is if they want to really go to town on it, you know, it's nothing to put a bit of a bend in the hair, you know. And I'm talking about the slightest bend because... What, what I find with a lot of clients is they'll overcompensate and they'll, they'll put like this curl in the hair that can look like they're going to a formal. Yes. You know, which I think is such Absolutely. a big mistake. A tight curl, yeah. A tight curl. It's just, and I, I think. And, it's you dated know, I think too. It, it instantly it's, it's makes so you look older. It does. It does. It's just, you know, it's a bit like your hair where it just looks, you've just got that beautiful fullness in there. So it's about, you know, Asian hair. If you want to get that beautiful kind of flick to it or that little bit of air in there, it's about just getting, whether it's a flat iron and just putting just a bump in there or you've got a big fat tong, it's just about putting that bend in the mid lengths and leaving the ends. Like I never curl ends. I never put a wave in the ends because it looks dated. It's all about for me keeping the roots more flat and the mid lengths is what does the talking. Now I want to talk about just to wrap it up, some of the rules that are meant to be broken with cut and styling. And, you know, there's, there's a massive, uh, I guess, uh, expectation that as you get older, you should not have a lot of length in your hair, that it can look, yeah. um, you know, inappropriate yeah. or it's time to cut yeah. your hair short. What if you yeah. really like long hair? Do you, do you let your clients have long hair into their 50s, late 40s, yeah, 60s? And how do you do it so that it looks modern and fresh and youthful? Yeah. Can I tell you, I've got, I've got a lot of clients who, who have got grey hair and I won't let them colour their hair. I'm really, and I know I probably wouldn't, I, sh I shouldn't say this as a business owner where I should be like taking everyone's money and saying you need <laughs> you know, to spend $500 on a colour. I have such a weakness for silver hair. I love, I love men and women with silver hair. So my thing is, make the best of what you've got. And this, this still comes down to my philosophy of, of what you've got, make the best of it, whether it's, you know, hair supplements or whatever, embrace what you've got. So I've and what got about women, length? What about length? length do, you, I, do you believe that, a, you know, you should cut your hair yeah. after a certain age? You know, if someone no, comes to you. I, I don't. Know, I, I, go, I, I, I go against the rule there. I mean, look at... Um, um, is it, uh, Sam Harris, yeah. Sam Harris from, yeah, from UK Vogue. I have so many clients like her and I would, I, I, the, I, I just don't know. You can't ask a woman like that to cover her hair because that I, I, you know, 
you just can't like it's not it's not kosher it's not right I love hair like that as long as you keep it cleanly cut as long as you I don't have a problem with length I gotta stress this I don't have a problem with length as long as the ends look polished but I think the other thing also is and I say this to my clients and and I can gauge from them is you know how to carry yourself there's a confidence. And when you have the confidence to wear that color, that natural silver gray color, you don't need to overthink it. As long as you've got a great haircut, the ends look polished, you'll look groomed, you'll look chic, you'll look French girl. When you don't have it cut fresh, that's when you'll look a bit kind of Stevie Nicks, a bit Fleetwood Mac-ish, a bit boho-ish. That's not, I mean, there's a time and a place for that. Don't get me wrong, and I love Stevie Nicks. But if you want to look chic and polished, you've got and put together, you've got to make sure your ends are still cut clean. So about hair length, I don't think, you you don't need to chop it all off. Like if you've got long hair, I, I have lots of clients with long hair and I love women with long hair. As long as the ends it kept really clean and polished. That's what's going to carry off that, that whole chic vibe that you do look after your hair. And there's a nice well-being about it also. You know, that all comes down to is it's healthy. It's well-groomed. You look after yourself. Now, if you want the long hair, but you don't have the fullness of youth or the fullness that you used to have, do you recommend hair extensions to kind of bulk out the hair? Yeah. Because, you know, I look at yeah. someone like Elle McPherson, I look at someone like yeah. Jennifer Lopez and, yeah. you know, they, their hair is their signature, but yeah. I remember J-Lo at the Super Bowl or Elle McPherson in any photo. Yeah. It's the fullness that makes that long hair yeah. really work. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I have clients that come to me for haircuts and colours. They'll go because we don't do tapes. I love tape extensions, but I don't do them. Um, if I had a dollar for every time my client said, I wish you did tapes, I would be really rich. But I don't. So they will go to their hairdresser, they'll get the tapes in, and then I'll cut it and they'll have a colour. I love nothing more, and this is where it's... The clients that I, that, that I have that go elsewhere, when you have hair extensions, it's meant to look natural. Yeah. So it's about adding, and you'll find that 10 times out of 10, women want fullness around the front because they've got a lot of hair breakage around the front and it's just, it's really soft and delicate. So it's about less is more. I don't want... I don't want women walking around with hair extensions looking like Britney Spears. It's about less is more. So it's adding just a few little bits around the front. Sure, add some, add some you know, hair extensions, you know, tapes up, up the back. But it's really what women want is volume. They want that, they want that oomph, if you will. Yeah. You know? Um, and that also is a sign of healthiness. Now, when you talk about J-Lo, you'll talk about, um, who else did you mention? Um, you know, you can, I mean, if you want to bring, yeah, if you, yeah, Elle McPherson. I mean, she's just blessed with good hair. But if you, want to, if you want to talk about, you know, a lot of people are perceived by celebrities that, that, <clears throat> wear hair pieces for a red carpet or something and they'll say I want that but what they don't understand is that they've got a head full of extensions in their hair <laughs> yeah that's what, that's what I was going to say so if you don't have that you know a horse mane like mine and yeah. you want to have long hair and yeah you don't want it to look like you know uh, a, dr a dribbly curtains. Do you yeah. advocate hair extensions to give that fullness? Do you think that that adds that you know vitality, that rejuvenating look yeah. of you? Yeah. Look, I don't. I I don't have a problem with with women getting extensions. 
but as long, the problem that I find in a lot of cases is, and I get it, hairdressers will put in more because they make more money. But my thing is put in less so they look, um, so it looks real. You know, so that's, and I worked in it as soon as I finished my apprenticeship here in a in in 92 I worked in a salon in London that invented the hair extension so I'm I I'm really particular that's why still to this day I think in 25 years I've had the salon I've had two hair extension people in here and I just I just didn't like their work because and you know they didn't stay for long but I just I just find that a lot of hairdressers, unfortunately, will pack in so many hair pieces and I just don't think it looks tasteful. Yeah, you end up looking you like know? a stripper. <laughs> yeah, and the clients that come in here, I've got to say, the clients that get their tapes done elsewhere that come here, they do it really well. So, you know, I'm all about less is more. It's about refinement. And, and just not looking like a Barbie doll. And finally, what about like really short pixie cut for as you get older, you yeah. know, the, as you were saying, referencing the Met Ball, you know, Sharon yeah. Stone still looks incredible. Oh, amazing. And, yeah. and, you know, she's not hiding behind her hair. It's, no. Uh, she's not hiding behind a curtain of hair. And um, yes. can, what, are the, what are your best tips for doing a really short, cut yeah. when you as you're getting older yeah. that still looks modern fresh rejuvenated yeah. yeah easy when I cut short hair and I do love cutting short hair because I think it looks super chic and the main contender that I play with is it's called hair hugging and I say this all the time it's about hair that hugs around the ear it's not short, it's not sharp. You've got side triggers that, that float. You can tuck the hair behind the ear. You've got hair down through the back here. You've got hair that moves. So it's about creating a shortness, but there's also a softness. It's hair that still moves. So Sharon Stone, great example of a woman that has got short hair, incredible cheekbones, she looks strong, she looks confident. And that's why, you know, I, I love cutting short hair. I'm not, I, I, I don't have a problem cutting short hair because my mission for a woman, and, and it's funny because you can always guarantee that when a woman sits in my chair and I've never done her before, she says, I want to go short, but I don't want to look hard. Oh, interesting. And they always mention a zip code, which isn't too far away from here, that they don't want to look like that they live in that zip code um, without getting too specific. And it's like, I will make you look incredibly, you know, feminine, chic, polished, and just, I. and the other thing with short hair is, I don't do any harsh lines. So I actually, when I do short hair especially, I don't even want them to look like they've been here. I want them to look like the haircut is already worn in and it's super soft, but there's a strong technical shape. So it still grows out in six weeks time really beautifully, but there's a really strong technical shape. And this is where my, I feel my editorial strength comes in is I'm fortunate enough to, to shoot a lot, and that's what I do, is there's an editorial side to what I do, which makes the hair look soft, and it doesn't look like it's a, it's a shape that doesn't move. It's, a, it's you know, I've, I've gone from, I've got the salon in mind because I'm cutting the hair in the salon, but there's a soft editorial shape to it. You know, and when you're doing, you know, shows backstage and, and you know, I lived in New York for 10 years, it's the same thing, like every haircut, you can guarantee every woman says, 
I don't want to look like I've had my hair cut. So that's what I've kind of taken back. So yes, it's about a clean edge for sure. It's about polished edges and, but you've got to have a strong technical shape to have that soft feeling to it. And finally, probably the most um, requested cut and the one that can really quite transform anyone, the bob. What is a modern yep. take of the bob that you think is universally flattering mm -hmm. and can really take you uh, and transform someone from looking like they've had the same haircut all their life to, you know, a modern lift? Yeah. Look, we had a time... We had a time a few years ago where it was a bob was it had to look solid and it didn't matter what age you were. It just had to look solid. <clears throat> and that to me says it just screams confidence. There's a nice arrogance about it also. It's very confident. But then it turned around and you found that women couldn't do anything with that bob because it was one length. Yeah, that's so true. then we had to shake it up. And it was probably with thanks to, um, I mean, who had a bob at one stage? I'm trying to think of... Victoria Beckham that. comes to mind for me. I, I mean, think. yeah, Victoria Beckham and um, um, Kaya Gerber. Oh, my God. Okay. Kaya yeah. Gerber is the ultimate, the ultimate bob. Like, she... I, I've written so many stories about her hair over the years. It's good. So when she had long hair and she cut it off and then it got shorter and shorter and shorter and all that, Kaya Gerber, I would say, would be the most requested haircut still to this day. So the thing about her haircut, even though it's a bit longer now, is so women went from totally solid where they couldn't move it to, Anthony, I need to be able to do something with it on my off days. Cause it's just, it's not doing anything. It's just sitting flat. So this is where layering comes into it. And you found that women that, that did that whole solid thing, they then went the total pole opposite and wanted movement and texture in there. So then they started having fun with their irons again. So it was about creating this still a beautiful blunt edge but then it was about the interior there was like fun so and is there a better length for a bob if you i guess want to flatter and possibly disguise yeah. you know things like yeah. your neck that might not be in the best condition as you know as you get yeah. older or cheekbones yeah. that are not as high as they used to be yeah for sure i mean like for example if your if your face is like round you know, small and round, the idea is to elongate it. So the perfect face shape is oval. It's oval because it's symmetrical on four sides. It's, it's completely symmetrical. So when you've got, you know, if, if you're um, quite angular and you've got like a diamond face shape, for example, you wanna make sure that you soften the edges so that's where little pieces of like little pieces of short of hair come into it. So it softens it. If you've got, you, you know, any, if you've got rectangle or square, you want to make sure that the length, the edge covers the corners. So it's all about the illusion of oval. Anything that you can do, the older you get, make sure. And I mean, it's incredibly difficult to. If you've got a small angular face, you, you'll either rock it and go short, keep it really tight and very short, and that works on women, but they've got to have really great features about them and they can carry that off. Yeah. But not a lot of women can. So you've got to grow the length a bit longer and keep the softness all floating throughout. You know, little things like that. I, I could not have enjoyed this conversation more. I, I feel like I have oh. a thousand more questions. And I know hair is just 
such an important aspect of your you know overall look and feel it can yeah. affect your mood it can affect your you know Definitely. um how you present yourself to the world and i just want to thank you so much for the wealth oh, of information you've shared in this you. episode and i would thank love you. to invite you back because I, I feel like we haven't even touched the surface but we haven't i'm going to start brushing my hair i'm going Brush to take my hair supplements Yes. I'm going to start using a hot oil or an oil treatment. Yes. Maybe Your hair sucks thing. up that oil. It does. It does, it does. You could put a liter of hot oil treatment on your hair and it would suck it right up. It, it would. It would. But yeah, it was what Anthony, thank you so much thank for being you. on the show. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you, darling. You take care. All right. Thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please share and rate this episode. I'd love that. 